joining the show today is none other than a free agent wide receiver who has quite the story. I'm really excited to get into some of this stuff because Jelani Irby is joining the show. He's a former fan control football wide receiver. He's played in the indoor football league. And he's really accomplished, considering all the setbacks that he's had in his career, he's accomplished a lot. And so I'm really excited to uh, have him on the show. How is everything going today, Jelani? Yeah, man, appreciate you having me on. Everything's going good, man. Just trying to work through this whole inflation stuff. You know how that go. <laughs> pay, pay, oh, $4, yeah. pay $4 for a damn loaf of bread. And and four thirty. Right, we're here right now. It's four thirty six a gallon. So for gas, that's been awesome. Uh, driving back and forth to places, but yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's gonna that's gonna be rough uh, for the next couple years. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully things will get a little bit better here in the near future. But hey, so talking <clears throat> about football and stuff, because you know, like it's very. I, I like talking to guys, and I don't care what level you end up playing. I enjoy talking to you guys because you have a certain experience with the game that I don't. And I don't know if my camera's frozen on your side. If it has, I'll just, you know, restart it or whatever, because it's frozen on mine. I don't know what's going on. Um, sorry, just interjecting that real fast. But because um, this is going on YouTube, too, so that's kind of part of my issue. Um, you You have a certain experience with the game that I don't have because I never played on the field per se. And so to get your perspective, I, I, I like to learn things about, you You know, like different techniques, different things that you guys will do. And wide receiver, DB, like backyard stuff, I was always playing that. So this is a position, these are two positions I really enjoy. But I think the first thing that I really want to focus on is, before we get into the story, why, what is your motivation? What what do you, what makes you wake up in the morning and continue to do what you do? One, um, I do also coach high school football uh, on the side. So I also, you know, I look at those guys like those are my little brothers. And in order for me to continue to preach hard work, dedication, discipline, and all the above, how can I preach that if I'm not doing it? Mm -hmm. you know, so to me, it's a very, it, it's a very slippery slope and it's, kind of hypocritical if I don't do it so that's one thing because I, I really do care about the youth and I want to give back and make sure everything's cool uh, make sure everybody has you know just something I want a young man to say coach Irby was motivation for me you know what I mean that's just <clears throat> excuse me, my allergies killing me <laughs> but no I worries. Want, you know because me growing up I had a coach like that tons actually and um, I'm very grateful for him. And that's one reason. Another reason is I just love the game. Like, I've been playing this since I was a kid. And, you know, it, it is a kid's game. And that's one thing I think a lot of dudes forget about. They forget about the fact that it is a kid's game. A lot of people get so caught up in the money. And, and which, let's be 100. If you're not playing in the, in the league or you're not playing in Canada, there really ain't no money in it for real. Not long <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, in the yeah. Well, a lot of times dudes getting paid four or five hundred dollars a week. And I mean, be grateful you're getting paid something to play a kid's game. But you know, you're not if you're not out here with a Josh Allen or, or Pat Mahomes contract, you ain't making no bread for real. So this is all about the love. You know what I mean? Do you love, for example, for me being a receiver, do you love running that slant route and understanding that that backer might whack your ass? You know what I mean? That's that's mm -hmm. something that you just got to – you got to love it. You got to love that. You know what I mean? Do you love lining up? If you're in the league, do you love lining up and understanding that a Darius Slay or Jalen Ramsey's going to put hands on you and you got to combat with that? Do you love that? And if you do, uh, it's all good. If you don't, it's going to be a long day. And I, I love it. I love going to the gym. I love – Throwing up heavyweight, getting explosive. I love it. And to me, it, is, it ain't work. It's fun. And I don't think a lot of people can say that, which is, to me, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. But I wish a lot of guys actually did have more fun doing that with the process. A lot of guys don't love the process anymore. A lot of guys just love the end result. But 
you can't get to the end result unless you understand how to get there. You know what I mean? It's easy to get on the train and, you know, I want to get to the final destination, but at some point you got to get on the train, the train got to flow through. Totally get that too, because from a media standpoint, it's the same sort of thing, right? Where there's very few people in media that that they knew somebody and they just kind of got a job and they got in, like you had to grind, you had to work for that stuff. And I'm kind of at that point right now where as a, most people know, some people know who I am. I have a following on Twitter. You've probably come across my work at some point or another. And so that's nice, but it's now it's waiting for that next step to happen, right? Like the next step forward where, you know, you, I can do this full time and I don't have to go do, you know, a side job building a campground or whatever I'm doing, right? Like I can do this full time. So I get that. And that is part of the grind. And, you know, so there's some similarity there outside of maybe the gym work. I don't have to go to the gym. I can do that if I want to, <laughs> but it's not, you know, so. No, that's cool because your story is fascinating. When I was going through it and different stuff, the the interesting things that kind of pops out is you've got a couple small schools that you started at. You played at uh, Central State University and, hang on, I just jumped on me, dang it, Dean's College, which are two schools I was not familiar with at all until you listed them, you know, to me. And you tried to go to the University of Kentucky, and you had some issues with that. So it was a credit issue, right? Yep, coming from junior college. Dean College is a junior college up in Massachusetts. Actually, it's about 20 minutes from Foxborough where the Patriots are at. Um, it was some. It was a mix-up. It was like progress towards your degree. Man, it was something crazy. It was something that should not have prevented me from playing, but mm. it did. And uh, kept me... Kind of kept me grounded because, to be honest, I went up there or here because I still live literally about maybe about five minutes from University of Kentucky now. I'm still up here. Um, I just ended up just, you know, that cost of living up here is nice. So I, love it. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm staying here. I ain't going back to D.C. Uh, so I live in Tennessee and I shit on Kentucky all the time because your roads are awful. Oh, uh, yeah, they're terrible. But you're right. The cost of living is awesome. <laughs> they got they got these damn like this is road up the street from me now, Harrisburg Road. This it, it's awful, man. They're always doing construction on something. It seems like. Yeah, and you're driving up the interstates and stuff, and there's holes and potholes everywhere, and I'm just like, wow, these are like maybe what West Virginia might have worse roads in Kentucky, but they're very close to being the worst in the U.S. I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it at all. <laughs> but no, so what was your how did, how how did you react when you found out that you couldn't play for Kentucky, and what what was what was that what did that process look like as you figured out what your next step was? Oh, my reaction was was I don't you know I think it was a mixture of hurt and pissed uh, because you know you work so hard uh, for like you said I went to Central State which is an HBCU up in Ohio mm-hmm. and they had just restarted their football program about two years prior. Two or three years, I, I'm just going to say two or three years, give or take, um, weren't even giving out scholarships yet. So essentially, I was still a walk-on. Everybody on the team was a walk-on, essentially. Uh, you know, you got to pay for books. You got to pay for everything. So that was a hassle. But go up there, uh, catch an injury, didn't really recover from that in time. Um, yeah, that was rough. That that was probably one of the most, I'm not going to say grueling, but it was a rough time period because I was an 18-year-old, fresh out of D.C., you know, the nation's capital, just smooth. Everything was just high run. I'm cussing the buses, trains, everywhere, no ways all the time. And then I get off a plane in Dayton, Ohio, get in a shuttle. Dayton's cool, but, like, you get in a shuttle, take you down this big-ass interstate. And then the interstate, you get off an exit, and everything is like this. There's one road going, and then I don't even know where the other side was at. But it's just nothing. It's just one road. Look this way, tobacco fields. Look that way, cornfields. Couldn't see anything. (laughs) Even in the distance, you couldn't see nothing else. So I was shocked, and my mom was actually with me in the shuttle. She ended up getting a flight back home. So you got my mom helped me move up there. And then you just got cornfields, tobacco fields, and then you pull into this small ass university. It was way smaller than I thought it was. And then 
about two, three hours later, my mom's like, all right, see you Thanksgiving. <laughs> she gets a cab. That's how you know. That's how you know it was a grip though. It wasn't even Ubers yet. She gets in a cab, goes back to Dayton Airport. So now I'm just sitting there like, oh, damn. I I didn't sign up for this. Like, that ain't what I signed up for. All of the Central State. I don't want nobody watching this to be like, mm, you ain't worried about him. But <laughs> it, it was rough, though, because I wasn't accustomed to that. Mm -hmm. I'm a big city dude, and then I, I went there, polar opposite. So then you get hurt, hurt on top of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You get hurt on top of that. That just, it, it screwed me up mentally. And, you know, I, I called my mom on the phones like, right, Ma, I, I'm trying to come back. I got to come back. <laughs> her first words, and I thank her for this, the only thing she said was, FAFSA are already paid for, so you got to stay. The loans is already in. You got to stay put. Now, if you want to leave uh, after uh, the semester, and then we, you know, maybe you stay home for a semester and start over somewhere in the fall, you can do that. Um, and my OC, uh, Henderson Mosley, uh, God rest his soul, he ended up passing away. But Henderson Mosley, he's actually, like I said, he's from from home. So he knew what I was going through, kind of. And I talked to him about it. He's like, man, yeah, I heard you a little homesick, man. He's like, if you want to leave after this, that's cool. I understand. Uh, but just give me till December. When the season's over, I'll help you transfer anywhere you want. So I tried to tough it out, and then I get hurt. So I, I was just done. I was done after that. And it, it was a little immaturity on my part because I ended up just quitting the team. Mm -hmm. And there were some other factors in me quitting also, which I won't go into. But, but at the end of the day, it was kind of immature on my part. So then I ended up leaving. I stayed the whole school year. But from January up until May, and looking back at it, I don't even know how I did this. But I rehabbed my injury myself. Like, no lie, I ice packs, we lived in these broke-down-ass dorms, dog. I can't even remember the name of it. That's that's how you know I'm so far gone from it. <laughs> so had an ice maker machine, a free ice maker machine downstairs, like in the basement. So I would go down there and get the ice, wrap it up in paper towels from the community bathrooms that we shared, and I would literally ice, ice stretch, ice stretch, ice stretch, and I would go in the gym walk on the treadmill at an incline, uh, just something to try to strengthen the area around the injury. Uh, so, yeah, I was good, man. Like, for some reason, we hit May. I started jogging on my own. July came around. I was running full speed. No pain, no nothing. I couldn't do that for, like, five or six months, probably from August up until late March, early April. I couldn't jog without pain. Um, so... Yeah, man, it, it was crazy. I'm, I look back at it, I'm like, yo, how did you even do that? So that that's that showed me just how tough I was mentally and my determination at that point. And then leaving there, going to Dean, Dean College was a top 10 JUCO at the time. They're a D3 school now, but they were a top 10 JUCO. Went up there. I was happy to be back on the East Coast. It was lovely, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, only thing, and I hope nobody get mad. Only thing that tripped me out was that damn Massachusetts accident. <laughs> that shit tripped me out. First time I heard a dude uh, say garlic up there, I lost it. <laughs> lost it. Uh, like I said, Dean, that's about 15, 20 minutes away from Foxborough in this direction. Yeah, uh, so everybody up there spoke like they were from Boston. Yeah, and Boston was like 30 minutes the other direction. What is that? That's like what? It's a... Uh... Park the car, right? That's what it is. Yeah. Yo, for real, <laughs> for real. <laughs> called Domino's. That's probably the last place I should call. I called Domino's, give me a piece. Dude was like, "You want some garlic with that?" I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> "I said, hey man, I want some what?" Uh, yeah, shout out to my Massachusetts people, man. That was that was a fun time. But now, Dean, it, it kind of it got me right. Uh, got me back on the right track from a football perspective because at that time the program was very, very good. Coach Basie was a very good coach. Um, we 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 was rolling. We sending dudes D one. Uh, we had what two or three straight conference championships. Went to a bowl game. Like we it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, but I ended up leaving Dean early 
had a new OC come in my second year. Second year comes in, he's, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, you know, I ain't going to go into that. I don't know what he's doing, but a lot of dudes ended up leaving. The majority of the team, majority of the offense ended up leaving. Hmm. So at that point, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. Can't do it. But I'm like, you know what? If I transfer somewhere else, that's going to mess up my clock, you know, my NCAA clock. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not screwing with that. So I go in, I go to ESPN.com. This is how you know I'm young. I'm young as hell. I'm 19, 20 years old at that point. I go to ESPN.com. I look up, uh, what is it? Damn, what is it? Yeah, I went to NCAA, the NCAA football section. Click on that. They have every Division One conference, every team. You can click on there, look at rosters and stats, all that. So I go in there. I'm looking at conference by conference because I know I can't get a scholarship at this point. I ain't got enough film. So I'm looking at it like ACC. Nope, don't got the grace for the ACC. I know as a whole I ain't got it. Big Ten? Ah, no, I don't got the grades for the Big Ten. I know I don't. Big 12 came around. I'm like, okay, Oklahoma? Nope, ain't no point even trying to walk on there. You know, they get four or five stars and they sleep. No point going there. I'm looking, I'm like, Baylor, maybe. That was around the time RG3 was starting to come up a little bit. So it's like, eh, that ain't really going to happen. They getting guys like that. So I just keep scrolling down. Big, what I say? I said Big Ten, Big 12. Uh, we get down to the SEC, and I'm also, while I'm doing this, going on school websites, looking at admissions for every school, which is crazy to me. That's when I found out it's easier to transfer in than it is to get admitted as a damn freshman out of high school. That screwed me up. I'm like, damn, I could have just went community college for like two classes and then transferred. Easy. <laughs> They had stuff on there like Alabama. All you needed was a 2.0 for my kinesiology major to transfer in. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so I'm looking. I'm like, all right, how do I match this up? How do I match up grades with the perfect opportunity for me to walk on and at least try? You know what I mean? Maybe get special teams or something because I'm not naive. You can't walk into Missouri when they were stacked with six, five receivers and think I'm just going to crack the lineup and I'm not even a scholar. So then I get down, I'm like, Missouri, looking at all this stuff, Kentucky comes up. And at that point, Kentucky was kind of struggling at the wide receiver position. Mm -hmm. And, they, you know, they were halfway, they were decent at that point. They were competing to go to bowl games. They're not anywhere near what they are now. Um, but they were competing to go to bowl games. Receiver was the position they were struggling at. Uh, and I looked at it, looked at the the admissions. I'm like, oh, OK, I can do that. I looked at the uh, the what's it called? The tuition, which I don't even want to know what it is now. If you see that campus now, shout out to UK because they done they've renovated the hell out of it. I heard the the damn admissions is, or the tuition is out of this damn world. But I looked at that those prices. I said, all right, out of state, I can do that. And of course, loans, loans out the ass. Of course, that's how they get you. <laughs> don't get loans, kids. So uh, I look at that, show my mom, show some friends. They're like, yo, you might want to do that. And I'm thinking that I'm looking at stuff on YouTube. I'm going into full football mode. I'm on YouTube looking at Kentucky football stuff. I'm like, yo, I can go. I can play. I know I can play with anybody. Just me being a competitor, I, I think I can go to Bama and play. But I also knew the logistics of the situation. They got five stars out the ass coming in left and right mm -hmm. there's there's no way i don't even think they have walk-on tryouts at Bama. if you're a walk-on they recruit you as a damn walk-on as a mm -hmm. pwo some school a lot of schools are going away from the tryouts it just so happened that kentucky was still doing trials they don't do it anymore but uh, there's only a few schools in the state that actually still do it i think i know wku western kentucky university they still do it it's not a scholarship issue too though isn't it? And well, not even just that, but it's more of the roster numbers that they're limited to. Yeah. So they can that, only have so many people. And if they have enough people walking in that they have preferred walk-ons and they fill up those spots, there's no point in having a tryout if you don't have a spot left. Right. Right. In a school like UK or Kentucky, they're, they win in eight, nine games a year now. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get the kids, you know, the kids that come in, you're going to get those prospects. Even if you had an awesome PWO, if you think he's a fringe guy, 
like he's here. They go my coach shit popping up again. <laughs> you got a fringe guy where, you know, he's a scholarship guy right here. And right here, he's just below that. So we can offer him PWO. The only problem with that, and I had to learn with some of the kids I was coaching, just selling my kids to different colleges, promoting them. I had to learn that just because they give you a PWO does not mean you can't get money. They can mess around and throw you some bread from another program. Let's say you're an art major. You paint really damn well. They mess around and talk to the art program. Hey, can you give him 5000 And you got 5000 now. So if you're an in-state guy, let's say you're in-state, let's say you're from Louisville, or my bad, Louisville. I know people here hate me saying it like that, but Louisville, right? If you're from Louisville, you're in state, clearly. So let's, I don't, again, I don't know the tuition. Is. Let's say tuition is 6000 for in-state. They may slap you with three or 4000 for the art program. Now you're only playing 2000 a month. And if you have good grades overall, you may not pay enough. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends. Um, now, the swindle to that is, yeah, they can help you get money in other areas, but you're not a, you're not coming in on football scholar, mm -hmm. which means you're probably on six, six team or seventh team, or you're on no team, you're just on scout team, which is probably the worst, which is probably what I would have ended up doing. And I didn't think about it at that point. I was just hard headed God, you, you wanted a chance you want yeah, an opportunity uh but yeah so they had walk on tryouts i contacted andre woodson who used to coach there um playing the league for a little bit quarterback yep, yep. 2008 yeah or seven. Something, something like that he was really good though. a lot of people up here they they revere that dude i don't even know where he's at but no they, so actually he, way back when they used to make these uh, EA Sports used to make these head coach games. Yeah. And the last one that they made, I think uh, Tony Dungy was on the cover. I think it was the last one they made. He's one of the quarterbacks that's coming in. And so when you're like going through it, and you're like you're going through the draft process and everything, like he's the guy. He's like like you know you might get a scout box or something that comes up like hello we really like Andre. It's a really cool game. Yeah. But, um, no, that's <clears throat> plus I I used to collect football cards when I was little and. 2008 score i had almost the entire complete set and that i bought from packs and put together that way you know the yeah. old school way instead of buying the whole set but uh no yeah he was i think it was 2008 was when he was drafted i, I remember him from that or the giants picked him yeah he's with the giants played for my commanders mm -hmm. <laughs> okay can i just <laughs> no. Y'all could have picked something else, man. <laughs> could have picked something else. I talked to my boys. Uh, got a group chat, and we just clown that damn name all the time. I'm, I'm a root for him. Like I'm, go Commanders. I'm a root for him, but I I can't stand it, man. But it's also because we've been accustomed to that same wild ass name that they had for all those years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's one of the things you'll you'll get used to it. Just like nobody in Oklahoma you know, really, really gravitate towards the Thunder, leaving Seattle being the Supersonics. It's one of those things. But, you know, it, 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 it'll hit. But, yeah, man, he, he – I talked to him. I remember I messaged him on Facebook, and we were communicating that way. And uh, I was sending him, like, workout uh, clips that I had. I had my high school film still. Uh, had a few clips, practice clips from Central and Dean, but not really. I just had to somehow, like, not steal them, but I had to, like, when we were watching film, one time I had to, like, get it off somebody else's laptop because they weren't trying to give me film. It's, it's, college football is a crazy game, like, mm -hmm. especially when you tell a group of coaches, like, listen, I don't want to be here no more. I appreciate it. Uh, as Central, I was just, I was just hurt. Physically and mentally, I was hurt because I was like, where, where the hell am I at? So, they didn't really like that, I don't think. And then Dean, same thing. It was just, I just had to go. You know, he wasn't good coach, but it, it was not the situation for me. And that's all. But, yeah, going to Kentucky, you know, I talked to Andre Wilson. I talked to Pat Washington, who was the receiver coach. I believe he's at Appalachian State now. Maybe he left already. But So I talked to those two. Get in with the guy who's a Kentucky 
legendary figure and then get in with your position coach. So I talked to those guys and the director of football operations at the time, Nolan Jones. I talked to those guys and uh, just kept bugging them and bugging them and bugging them, sending them email. I found their email addresses somehow. Um, it, it, it was, trust me, it was a process. And when we had tryouts, they already knew who I was. So I went out there. I don't know what I ran in the 40. They didn't tell me, but I just know when I ran it, they all had this face like, you know, that, that look. They gave each other that look. Like, ah, okay, he's all right. Because when I walked out there, you know, a few of them, they just looked at me and gave me a head nod. And I'm looking around, looking around like, yo, dude, are they doing that to anybody else? They did it to a few other guys that they probably already wanted to look at walk on wise, but they did it to me also. So I'm like, all right. I can't mess this up. So I go out there, run every route, Chris, catch the ball. Probably about an hour, about an hour or so after that tryout, Nolan Jones calls me and says, hey, man, you look good out there today. Um, love to have you part of the program. And I'm like, man, I appreciate it. Thank you. He's, then all of a sudden, it's like the world just stopped. He said, but. And then, it's always when somebody says, but, you already know some shit's about to go off the wall. <laughs> so he says, but. We can't do nothing with you in the weight room, in the field, on the field, whatever. We can't do anything with you with the blue and white on your on your back until you get your clearinghouse sorted out. And I'm just like, yo, what? I, I got into the school, like, what else? You know what I mean? I've been in college, but it turned out when I was at Dean, there's this thing called progress towards your degree. I knew about it, but I didn't think it affected athletics. So, and I don't even know if this is the full reason, but I looked at it. They gave me some lame excuse, but I looked at it. So when I was at Dean, I came in, well, I registered for classes a little bit later. Don't know, don't ask me why. I was, I got accepted to Dean like late spring or something. So mm -hmm. there's no reason that that should have happened. But I go to Dean and some, for some reason, for those who don't know, junior college, you're getting your associates. Yep. So. Dean has 200 level classes. They even had some 300 level classes. A lot of the general ed was already full. So like your English comp and basic, you know, your bio one-on-one, -on -one, all that stuff was full. So I couldn't take it. So now I've got to like, they've got to do an override. Like my advisor has to go to like deans of different departments, like we can't get Jelani Irby in this class. We can't get him in this class or this class. So we have no choice. You know, either you have to override some stuff and put him in these classes, or we're going to have to put him in the higher classes. I know it's ass backwards. You know, that's like telling somebody, that's like you telling a baby, hey, run down this hallway and go get your bottle before the, the kid can even crawl. Like, he can't even crawl. You want to tell him to go run? So you're going to tell me try to take a 300 level class when I'm supposed to take the 100 and 200 level before that. And that's what I was doing. I still passed them. So that's why I was like, yo, that's insane. So then I get to the UK. I don't have those prerequisites. I don't have none of that. So it screwed with me. The progress towards your degree, it was it was all messed up, man. Like, And then I tried to appeal it. Of course, that failed. Um, the crazy thing is the NCAA didn't even get involved. It was the SEC. The SEC did not. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't even make it to the NCAA at that point. So that that was pretty that's pretty heartbreaking. Um, and that was 2012. So that would have been was that eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? Yeah, that was fifth year anyway. So even if I did try to run out that clock try to you know really just ride it all the way out that was five years so it's nothing i could really do but i had talked to the compliance office and they were telling me about well hey you know we can't clear you for this but we got a few other schools around here in the area we got georgetown college which is naia it's about 20 minutes this way mm -hmm. or you can go to kentucky state hbcu about 10 15 minutes down the road that way and there's other schools lindsey wilson Campbellsville, you know, places like that. But at that point, I think Wesleyan's over there too, right? Hell, Kentucky Wesleyan is down Owensboro, a few hours from here. Man, at, at that point, though, you know, you you young, you piss. I just bust my ass from literally from 
barely starting my senior year of high school because, you know, my junior year, we were actually pretty stacked my junior year. I went to what is now, well, formerly now, Woodrow Wilson Senior High School in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Now that Jackson Reed, whatever the fuck that is. No disrespect to, you know, the people they named them after. It's historical figures, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> All this stacked. renaming stuff just makes things confusing. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we were stacked at receiver my 11th grade year. And I started getting a little bit of tick, a little bit of clock at the end of the season, towards the end of the season, I should say, special teams. And every now and again, uh, my receiver coach would throw me in there every now and again because they probably knew they were going to have to start me next year. We had one dude coming back. But I ended up starting senior year. And, I mean, I barely probably did that just based off a numbers game, just being honest, looking back at it. So you got that. And then I go – Division to HBCU, and I I think I got that call in like April. Not even if they had scholars, they wouldn't have gave it to me. So you got that. Then I got a transfer to a junior college, which I found out later on was like a baby Ivy League school. I was like, what the fuck? Y'all didn't tell me that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so baby Ivy League school. I'm like, I no this. I know I'm a highly intelligent man, but damn, I didn't know that. So, baby Ivy League, and then I come all the way to the SEC, and they actually want me. Like, they were actively recruiting me as a walk-on for the program before even the damn trial. I knew before going in there, I'm like, I just got to just not screw this up at the trial, which I didn't. And, you know, that at one point, it was a sour spot, and I didn't like talking about it for a while. Everybody like, what happened to you with you in UK? Mm, <laughs> shut your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> you look back at it and I'm like, I done been through it. Been through the ringer. And you know, then at that point it was just like, I'm not going to Georgetown College. Looking back at it now, I probably should have went to Georgetown College because I would have had like three years of eligibility. Uh Kentucky State, I probably wouldn't have went there. But which ironically, Kentucky State is Central State's rival. So that would have been funny. <laughs> Come back and see them. But yeah, Georgetown is probably what I would have ended up doing. I would have not paid for nothing. Just coming straight from Kentucky, whether I played or not, they'd have been like, oh shit, that's the Kentucky dude. Yeah, we, we taking him. He ain't got paid for nothing. And it's a very good school. I've had some kids that I've coached and ended up going there. Great football program, especially at that level. Looking back at it, hindsight's twenty twenty. But looking back at it, I I would have went there. Uh, would have gave me some college film too. But I ended up not having shit at the end of the, all this film wise. But the one thing it did do, I shit, I'm battle tested. I know that. I know that. So when I was done with college, it was like, whatever's next, you know, that's it is what it is. But I'm ready for it. So. One of the things I think that was it, this is kind of going back because the stories led us back, you know, to that point, but going back to what you said in the beginning, you want to be that motivation for guys, right? So like, that's, that's your, like, that's your driving factor in this. You love the game. You want to be the motivation for those kids coming out, especially kids under you. And you said you had people who were like that for you. Who were those people way back when? First and foremost, uh, coach Horace Fleming, he passed away a few years ago now, but I actually knew Coach Fleming before I even got to high school. Mm-hmm. He used to coach. Uh, who did Coach Fleming start coaching? Eighties. Started coaching football in the eighties. So my uncle, he also was a coach for many, many years back home in Washington D.C. So those two knew each other. So I knew of Coach Fleming. My father is also an official still to this day. Yeah, my father just turned sixty last year. He's he's still running up and down officiating high school games, still getting it in. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he dedicated, man. I give it to him. He dedicated. I don't know if I'm going to be 60 still trying to run, but <laughs> I'm going to work out junkie. I don't know, man. I don't know about that one. might but. not be doing that 4-4-40 anymore at that point. but Nah, nah. If I can hit 4-8 <laughs> or something, maybe I'll be happy. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I knew Coach Fleming way before that. So, coming into high school, it was – it was a smooth transition and just him cracking jokes like, hey, if you don't do this, I'm going to call your damn uncle or something like that. 
uh, Coach Fleming, man, he he he's one of them dudes. He definitely has a tendency to probably rub you the wrong way. Uh, but the older you get, the more you realize, yo, he he really he really taught us life. Like he really did. It, you know, he would say stuff in practice. His favorite phrase was not lying to you. Because when you hear this, you're going to say, what the hell kind of coach is that? I promise. But he used to tell us, and I quote, you ain't shit. And when you hear it, you're like, as a kid, you're like, I am the shit. Coach, what you talking about? But you get in your 20s and then you just see things and you realize, nah, I'm not shit. I'm not. I love myself. I love people around me. But the message is, regardless of whatever you've done, there's always something bigger. There's always something next that you can accomplish. And at the end of the day, what you just did ain't shit. What's next? Because at the end of the day, I mean, for example, I'll take my coaching career. We went to, I used to coach at this school, actually not far from where I live at now, Lafayette High School here in Lex, uh, Lexington, Kentucky. We went to two straight state championship games at the 6A level. It's the biggest class yeah. high school ball here. And we went to two of them. That was in 2015, 2016. It's 2022. I ain't been back. So what the hell is next? Like, I, am I just going to live off of that? Can't. Um, and, you know, people do that. But as a coach, you can't live off of that. It's like, you know, what have you done individually as a coach? And have you, what have you done for these kids, you know, in this town, in this city? So at the end of the day, what we did doesn't matter. I ain't, I ain't shit. You know what I mean? We haven't accomplished nothing else. So even as a player, you catch a touchdown – the first drive of the first game of the season. But you don't catch no more. I mean, what what have you done for me lately? You ain't shit now. Like, what, what happened? So that's how I look at it. You know, Coach Fleming, he always had his, you know, his, his phrases, I'll say that. And he, he definitely, definitely broke my heart when he passed because I couldn't even go to his funeral. I was up here. And, uh, but, you know, he he's definitely one of those dudes that when you're younger, you know, we just, again, young and dumb, man. Like, you just don't realize who touches you uh, and how they're going to touch you, you know, for the longest. You just don't realize it. Um, but he he's one. Another one, honestly, and I, I don't know him, of course, but another guy who was an inspiration for me just growing up watching on television was Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah. I just watched him and not just because of these. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a factor. It is a factor. Uh, I used to want to wear a number 11 just like him. Uh, he's still one of my favorite, if not my favorite receiver, just the way he plays. And I like the way he, he handles himself off the field, you know, things he invests, he invests in, you know, business wise and just, Overall ethics and business, I you know, I appreciate guys like that and just trying to teach people. You know, you see him post stuff in the offseason when he was still playing, you know, him going to different countries with his family and things like that. You know what I mean? You don't see pictures and videos of him at the club popping bottles, which is cool. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Go do it, shit. But he just showed me also that there's other things you can do. You don't have to be, you know, as they say, more than an athlete. You don't have to just be an athlete. Um, so I, guys like him, I can appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that. But Coach Fleming, definitely, he he was the guy. He was the guy that really showed me, you know, regardless of what you do, you can always do something else. And at the end of the day, you ain't shit. Because <laughs> you ain't at the end of the day. Getting into your, uh, your actual pro career now a little bit. Because you, you – Worked out in the CFL, right? Like that was back in 17, 18. Um, you got into the, you got in, you were in the XFL sub, the draft as well, right? So, like, you were in that draft pool. I don't, you didn't get selected though, right? Yeah. Right. So then you got into the indoor football league, the Louisville Extreme, um, which <laughs> that must have been an interesting experience because, uh, so last year it was them that got shut down last year, was it not? They got kicked out of their mm-hmm. league. Yeah, they got shut down early. Yeah, because I uh, one of my contributors on Football Sapien got he uh, he died back in October, 
um but it was he had covered that story and that was why i knew about it and i was whoa you know so the louisville extreme that must have been interesting but you also got into fan control football which is something that is gaining a lot of popularity it's kind of a for people that don't really know yet it's kind of a silicon valley football experiment if that kind of makes sense um it's very entertaining you get on twitch so you can get on their website and watch these games and it's kind of like an arena style league uh they draft the teams every week right now i think is what they're doing i don't know if they did that last year i can't remember they did it last year what was that experience like going into fan control football and getting a chance to play there well First of all, that was one of the most unique things I've ever run across. I, I didn't even know about it um, until maybe late November, early December of 2020. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of it. You know, it's not like I ended up going to one of their camps or anything like that. Um, so Coach Jenkins and uh, Coach Liotta and, and Commissioner uh, Ray Austin, like, they didn't know about me. I didn't, like I said, I didn't know about it either. I just knew I was trying to play. I'm sitting in the house. It's got this pandemic hitting. It's still 2020. I'm like, man, 2021 need to hurry up. So I'm trying to figure something out. I'm like, man, I need to do something. I can't just sit here. And I'm like, I'm doing all these damn workouts. I'm working out crazy. It's, you know, the workouts, first and foremost, the workouts I did when the pandemic first started, I think that's, that's probably when I was in my best shape, like physical peak, because I had to make shit up in the house. And I had to go to the park and, you know, do makeshift pull-ups on tree branches and shit. Like, yeah, I felt like I was the shit at that point because I was like, yo, this this is this is crazy. And this is showing or even more like I really want this. Um, but. So it was December, I believe. I, honestly, I think it was one of them damn Instagram or Facebook ads. Like I probably was talking about football or video game or something. And it popped up in the ad and I just saw it. and was like, that was it. So I clicked on it. I start seeing Quavo and Marshawn Lynch. I'm like, oh, oh, what is this? So I saw all of that. I just I went to the website and looked up, you know, looked into it. And then I started looking up more info. And then I think I, I asked someone, like, is this legit? Like, this is a real thing? Like, they're really gonna have us let people type in a play and it gets voted on who gets the most votes for plays and we run with the fans call. And he's like, Yeah, yo, that's that's legit. So I looked into it. Sent all whatever film I had, workout clips also, uh, any documentation of me having contact with different teams, I was sending that. Um, and then literally, I think within 24 hours, I think I got an email saying that they were offering me a spot. And I was still kind of skeptical at first, but I kept looking stuff up. So I, I went to probably one of the greatest news sources ever. I went straight to Twitter. I went to <laughs> I went straight to that search bar and I was typing in FCF Fan Control Football League. And, uh, I think what's their Twitter, their Twitter handle was FC FCF LIO. Yeah. So I typed that in on Twitter, like put that in the search bar, and I'm looking at it and I'm seeing all these dudes. They're also they're like posting like you know blessed to receive a contract Fan Control Football. I'm like yo, this shit is real. Message one of them. It was like nah, Coach Jenkins is the real deal. I talked to Coach Liotta. You know, they were at the camps that they had down in Georgia or wherever, down in Atlanta, actually, yeah, to be more specific. And, yeah, it was real. So I ended up signing a contract like a day or two later. This was in December. So then I had to get some money together so I could try to fly to Atlanta like mid, beginning to mid-January. So it, it was a, it was quick is what it was. It was a fast turnaround. I went from doing nothing football-wise to just now all of a sudden I'm in a brand new league where damn Quavo and Beast Mode and and Austin Eckler are owners, you know what I mean? And then Johnny Manziel. They had had Joe Montana, I think, on one of their broadcasts at one point, too, which was Yeah, yeah, he was on the broadcast. He was on the broadcast. Uh, Destroying, I don't know how I forgot him. So, yeah, it was a cool experience. I ended up not staying the whole time, though, because, you know, some health stuff, stuff in my family started taking place. My dad ended up having some health stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. sister and my mother so it was a bunch of stuff I had to take care of that first Um, but for the time that I was there that was a cool experience like they had a lot of stuff uh, well thought out and I already knew year two was going to be sick I I saw that they were building they built their own facility like 
quick. I, I watched it. It's awesome. Like, I was yeah. watching it, I guess it was three weeks ago I put on a game. Because I signed up. I signed up. I'm on – I'm a part owner, you know, like, because that's what they're doing with the fans this year is you pick a team, and that's who you vote on for all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, for But it's Beast Mode's team, so I forget what they're called right now off the top of my head. But it was it was fun, like turning it on, and the it's just like the old arena league, and they got all the crazy lights and everything. And I mean, To's out there catching balls at forty eight years old. <laughs> like yeah, and the way they're doing it, they're very, very strategic with their marketing, and it, it's working. It's working. Um, I saw an article what was it, maybe a week or two ago. They were talking about Michael Vick. That turned out not to be true, but yeah. they're talking about Michael Vick uh, possibly playing and. Just the fact that he was mentioned, you type in FCF or you type in Michael Vick, the opposite is going to pop up. So you're in the news cycle, and T.O.'s there, and he's actually out there catching touchdowns and performing. So, you know, a lot of guys, it gives guys opportunities, and it also uh, gives guys opportunities to get more films so they can move somewhere else. You know what I mean? The more leagues, I don't buy this whole nonsense that I see people on Twitter talking about sometimes. Talking about our spring leagues don't work. And, man, look, it works. It don't work the way you think it's supposed to work. Most of these spring leagues are not going to overtake the NFL, nor should they attempt to do that. It's just not going to happen. But what should happen is you have these numerous leagues, multiple leagues, and they help everybody get fit. Like, I know in arena, the AFL, of course, doesn't exist anymore, but you got the IFL, you got the NAL, you got the CIF. I don't know if there's another one beside that, but that's three arena leagues. Then you got the FCF, USFL just started, XFL is coming back. They're doing showcases and stuff starting in about two, three weeks. It's, it's all ramping up, and the more leagues you have, the more opportunities you have for people to play professionally. And that's what- Spring leagues. Yeah, the people always complain about them and say that, you know, they're not going to work or whatever. But there's a different purpose to Spring Leagues than just pure fan entertainment, correct? Yeah, most definitely, man. The the biggest thing is you want to give people opportunity. That's what this is all about. Um, You know, the more opportunities, the better for the players. And that's part of the issue, too. You have a lot of people that aren't, you know, pro-athlete. They're pro-front office pro head coach or whatever whatever term you want to use, but it gives athletes more opportunity to get filled. Because that's, that's sometimes that's what coaches always tell you. That's what front office guys tell you. You don't have enough film. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't have enough of this, enough of that. I've just realized there's ways around it. So a lot of times I don't have that much film now. I have some, but I don't have a lot now. But what I do, I make these workout videos and I put them all together and I make sure I do specific things that teams want to see, especially for my position. So you do that, and you just got to be very strategic, understand who you're marketing your skill set to. So that's how I get around it. But as far as the spring leagues as a whole, you know, like I said, you got three arena teams or three arena leagues that I know of off the top of my head. You got the USFL started. FCF is going on. So, you you know, you have different stuff, different outlets. They even got this thing called the Hub. I've heard of it before out in California. It's usually in California. Yeah. Um, uh, Draft Bible, Rick Ciratella. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So they, they got that, um, which is not a league per se, but it is. You can get invited to it. And, you know, they got scouts and stuff like that. Just record your workout, um, send it out to different people and, there's guys that get signed to the NFL or there's guys that bust their ass in that, at that hub camp and then they get workouts with NFL teams. That's all you want at the end of the day. You just want a shot. Um, you know, that would be cool for me to mess around and get a workout with the NFL team or something. like. That's on your resume for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. especially coming from a guy like me from the situations I've been in and had to bust my ass to get out of those situations and, you know, just build my resume up. So, you know, it's just stuff like that where uh, it's all about opportunity. You just got to give players more opportunities. And then, like I said, you got these dudes on Twitter just want shit on everybody. Just spring leagues are stupid. Like, nah, man, it's, 
that ain't what it is. <laughs> I mean, if, if if you've actually watched the USFL this year, that has been some very compelling football. And so yeah. being in the National Guard, you know, um, I know a lot of people from the are into different stuff, right? And some really different stuff sometimes. But one of the guys, he's he was uh, he's my chief in like so think like a squad leader. And then he became a platoon sergeant and he's a huge NASCAR guy. Like he just loves NASCAR, but he'll watch college football. He's an Arkansas fan, by the way. So, you know, that's not too anti Kentucky and too anti Tennessee. I'll mess with him about it. Um, but he's an Arkansas fan. So he'll watch college football because he likes the passion that the kids play with in college. And he can't stand the NFL because you don't see that same sort of, passion a lot of times and he see he was texting me i think this is like the first week the usfl was on he's like i'm loving this new football league like these kids they are playing like like their lives depend on this i'm like well for a lot of them it does you know <laughs> like this is their chance and if you like this league is they've done a, a very good job with the broadcasts so just from a television standpoint everybody that i know that's been down there covering the league said that they're doing an awesome job there I know a couple of the guys in the league and we've been talking and they had nothing but good stuff to really say about it either. And so when you, when you combine all three facets like that, where you can, you can, the players are happy, the people watching are happy and the media is happy. I think that's a pretty good combination uh, for success. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's what the XFL ends up doing. Also, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. Um, just, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Not now. I don't really watch it now. I don't even know the last time I watched it, but. If you saw my YouTube history, I watch all old wrestling stuff all the time. Like, the attitude there is it. <laughs> so, <laughs> when I heard that The Rock had bought it, <clears throat> I was like, gotta be, gotta, gotta, it, it's gotta work. It's gotta be it. So, everything, to, everything The Rock does, it, it, it seems like it works. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, you put, a, you put his name on a movie and people could watch it because it's The Rock. Yeah. Like, people love The Rock. But, um, and it's not just him. Like Redbird, I think, was investing in it, and they yeah. invested in some really good sports projects before. And yeah. uh, Danny Garcia, if I remember correctly, too. It's it's a very very good group. Um, so it's it's hopeful. So two questions is number one is you've been in contact with some NFL teams this year, right? Like kind of talking at least. Yeah, I actually talked to via email. I talked to the Houston Texans about a week week and a half ago. Just send stuff out. You know, I'm, I don't have an agent or anything like that, so I, I do my own stuff. And uh, I just know how to market, you know, especially myself. So, yeah, I was just sending stuff out to teams and, you know, figuring out, even, first of all, finding out email addresses for NFL teams is crazy. Like, the, stuff, about it. the stuff I had to do to find that, I'm going on LinkedIn and I'm connecting with not even coaches on that in that organization. I'm connecting with like video people just to find the, the damn domain, like to find out, okay, is it is it at Steelers.com or is it at Steelers.nfl.net? Like what is it? <laughs> then you figure out it's you know, some teams they got first initial, last name at this dot nfl dot net. And then you realize, oh okay, I got everybody's email address now. So then, you know, it's just finding that first email address. So once I did that, I got a whole list of different teams and stuff like that, man. And so it's just spamming people. And I've got uh, this thing where I can see if people look at my email. So, yeah, I've been getting people look at it, uh, clicking on links, opening up videos that I've sent and just stuff like that. So mm -hmm. Texans actually did respond about a week and a half ago. And it was positive feedback. So... Who knows? Maybe I'll hear back from them throughout the summer or at some point. Maybe somebody goes down in camp. I, I don't know. Maybe. But I'm always stay ready. And then I've also talked to uh, the XFL. So we'll see what transpires with that, if anything at all. I mean, so, yeah, the XFL is getting ready to get started as well in 2023. So that was the lot. The, one of the last questions I had for you is that's something you're interested in playing in 2023. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a little bit of contact with them, uh, some of the personnel guys, and uh, trying to get in one of those showcases. And ideally, I would love to go to the Jackson State one because I did start at an HBCU. 
uh, that would be pretty cool. Have it come full circle and uh, kind of like a kind of like a vindication or redeem kind of thing. Uh, just you know, kind of go back and do the whole HBCU thing there. Get the possibly meet Coach Prime. You know what I mean? Uh, that would be cool. That would be really cool. But if not, maybe I attend the uh, the Maryland Showcase, which is literally College Park where UNB is located. That's about 20 minutes from where I'm from, 20, 25 minutes roughly. So that's not hard. I can get the train there. But, yeah, man, I'm definitely interested in it. Uh, I think it's a, it's a thing where I can make the most out of a situation. Um, and I don't know where the teams are going to be at. I'm pretty sure, you know, certain cities will get the same teams back. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll have – uh, the Dallas team, pretty sure you'll still have the St. Louis team. At least I hope they bring the Battle Hawks back because that was that was a great atmosphere. Yes, that was really cool. That and not being a homer, but the the defenders, those games, those were pretty live too. And they had that damn Cra- the, the longest beer um, snake ever, wasn't that what it was? And beer snake, yeah, that that was nice. I would love to do that, man, because this this is a great opportunity. Just like we talk about spring leagues again, great opportunity and. They already got the TV deal sorted out um, mm-hmm. by the XFL and by the USFL securing those those deals, and that's probably the biggest thing. Like I know the IFL, uh, I remember at one point the IFL had a goal, I believe, to try to get on TV. I pretty much figured that wasn't gonna happen. I think they were trying to overtake like how the AFL had TV deals, mm-hmm. but the market for the arena isn't really like that anymore. But I mean, you can watch all their games on YouTube. They get a lot of subscribers for it. I mean, you got to get in where you fit in. And, uh, you know, FCF, same thing. Got a deal with one of NBC's, like, uh, NBC station, and then you can watch it on Twitch. So it's the same thing, man. You just got to get in where you fit in. I think the XFL and USFL are both doing that. Uh, I mean, I like the opportunity. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, Jelani, this, your story is awesome. You know, it's like constant battle, right? And constantly having to fight and, and, to, and to get into that kind of stuff. And I think it's really easy for anybody who listens to you or knows anything about you to root for you going forward. And I think I don't think that's... I think you, you something's wrong with you if uh, you don't want to see this guy succeed. So what I guess would be... What is the last thing like the last word uh, that you would say about yourself to kind of sell yourself to a team getting an opportunity? I could give you all the cliche stuff, you know, I'm a hard worker and all that. I mean, I think from all these years, I think that's pretty evident that I'm a hard worker. (laughs) Um, I wouldn't go through all of this if I wasn't. Uh, You know, a lot of guys quit after a few days or a few weeks. I didn't even quit after a few years. You know what I mean? When I send stuff out to teams, you know, I want them to see, like, I include every, from top to bottom, every article, everything that's been written about me, because I want people to see, you know, this is, this ain't nothing new. You know what I mean? This dude been grinding this out, and I... Most people start from when they leave college. I just I tell people all the time, like, this is 14 years. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've been, just like I told you, the whole start with high school, barely really started my senior year having to earn that, and then going into college at 18, now being in my early 30s, it's, yeah, that's 14 years. So, yeah, you know, coaches say stuff like, you know, I got to be able to in the fourth quarter. People just haven't had to trust me for 14 years. So, you know, I had to trust my own judgment for 14 years. I had to trust my own discipline for 14 years and my own willpower for 14 years. So if I can do that for 14 whole years, uh, you can trust me in the fourth quarter. That, that's, <laughs> like pretty, that, that's pretty easy. So I think the biggest thing about you, though, is how honest you are with, about yourself. Um, when you, you know, you talked specifically about some of the, um, the college stuff, you know, like when you, you said, yeah, it was really immature of me to quit the team. Like not everybody is going to sit here and, and say that about themselves, you know, because it's, yeah, 
someone like I, like me, and some other people, they'll understand, like, yeah, you were young, you make a mistake, blah, 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 but, like, this is, this culture is crazy in terms of holding things against you for years and years and years, um, but it's, like, the fact that you're honest about yourself, I think that says a lot more about you as a person and a teammate, and how much someone can trust you, because you looked back and you said, yeah, I made this mistake, I made that mistake, I'm willing to talk about that mistake, you know, a lot of people aren't. I think that's really awesome about you too. So I really hope to see you uh, hopefully in the NFL, but at the very least the XFL this next year would be awesome. Um, the rosters are going to be huge. Supposedly, I think they're talking about 70 man rosters um, for which would be awesome. And uh, we'll see how much they hold up to that. That's all still kind of a waiting game, but yeah, no, it's, it's going to be fun to see you on a football field again, dude. Yeah, man. I hope it for it, man. I appreciate it. Where can people kind of keep up with everything that you're doing? Um, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Urbanator Incorporated. That's I R B I N A T O R uh, I N C. Kind of like the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or what was that movie back in the day? I swear, the movie everybody watched. Uh, uh, American Pie, The Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> you watched American Pie and you heard The Terminator. I like it. I like it, dude. You take it easy. You have a great rest of your night, dude. All right, man. You too. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into my channel, checking out the content. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and follow us on your favorite podcast platform as well.